Welcome to the SC2K show where we pay tribute to Rowdy Roddy Piper. This is Ron Moore along with Michael Bernhan and the Star Soldier. Howdy, hi. How are you guys doing out there? Yeah, and so it's been about a week now since, yeah, tomorrow will be a week that Rowdy Roddy Piper passed away. So it's been a tough week for wrestling fans, uh, especially fans of Piper. And, of course, it's tough for his friends and family. And so there's been nothing but tributes on Twitter and Facebook and and YouTube and everywhere the whole week. And last Friday, last Friday or Saturday night, me and Star Soldier did a quick video on my channel talking about Roddy Piper. And so I felt like we should do a podcast um, to have more time to talk about Roddy Piper. There's so much to talk about. I mean, we could probably go on for hours. This podcast could be a long time if we wanted it to. And so, yeah... Um, I'll go ahead and start out with and, and some of the stuff I already mentioned in my video on the Ron Moore channel. But Roddy Piper, when I was a kid, I mean, I, I didn't really start watching until I was seven years old. And Roddy Piper, um, during that time when I was seven, I think he was, he might have barely turned face. Because in 87, he had a match at WrestleMania 3 with Adrian Adonis. And he was a face at that time. So I did not, I was too young to watch him as a heel back then and so I didn't really know much about Piper until like the early 90s mid 90s toward uh, the end of his WWF career I do remember his classic match with Bret Hart at Wrestlemania 8 and yeah so then after that he went to feud with Jared the King Lauder for a cup of coffee at King of the Ring 94 I believe it was if you guys remember that yeah remember yeah, of it, yes yeah, and so uh, it was sometime around that time, I think Piper was kind of in and out of WWF. And then in 96, after the storyline where uh, Vader attacked the Gorilla Monsoon and put him out, Piper was the interim president. And that's where the feud started with Goldust, and that was a match that really made Goldust. The Hollywood backlot brawl, the O.J. Simpson footage, and all that good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, with the Ford Bronco escape in from the police. Yeah. <laughs> they even Thick tried man. to get OJ to be a part of that. And thankfully, yeah, he turned them down. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes. But, I, I didn't. you know, Roddy was really crazy back then, so he was up for any ideas like that. Yeah, really? <laughs> I mean, man, I didn't know that, though. They really tried to get OJ to do that. I was thinking, whoa, that was a great idea. We can get this guy. He's from Hollywood. Okay, he might have killed somebody. We don't know. We'll just get him on the air. Ha, 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 ha. It'd be crazy. Yeah, be like, Let's go for it, Vince. Ha. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, he Roddy was he awesome, but he was crazy awesome. And that's what made him so appealing. Yeah, he would have been like, yeah, O.J. Simpson, yeah. <laughs> Great football player. He might have murdered his wife. But, ah, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Bring him in here. <laughs> I so, yeah. just see him grab his hair and, you know, his gears turn inside his head. It'll be hot, Vince. Yeah. Uh, me and Dusty, we're up for it. Dusty, yeah. Yeah, are you sure Vince Russo wasn't up for it? <laughs> no, but anyway. Oh, Russo. That's just that's one of those things that you just sit there and think, why would you go that route? Why would you have a a, a guy that's basically known, you know, he's probably not been convicted of it, but he's known for killing his wife. Well, these days WWE wouldn't even do that, you know. Like they they've just scrubbed um, Hulk Hogan. You know, you know, if you ask Vince, he'll probably be like who. Um, from the WWE like network, from WWE websites, from programming, just for saying the N-word. But no, let's get a convicted a guy who's basically known for killing his wife and her lover and just shove them on, you know, shove them on WWE TV. Because it's, yeah, thankfully it they didn't go through with it. Yeah. Lord. I mean, in a lot of ways, WWE are hypocrites. Oh, they, they, mean, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Let's get rid of Hogan for saying the N-word, but, you know, it's okay to uh, kind of harp on Steve Irwin's death and uh, let's have an idea to bring O.J. Simpson in. and um, storylines where they mention the N-word. <laughs> yeah, even though 
in a, in a way in a certain way that's different because that was a like a parody or yeah uh, it was in whatever. the script where Hulk Hogan's you know tirade was sort yeah something he shouldn't have said and to begin with I don't well, care if it that, was in private or not well I'm surprised they didn't drop the end bomb during the whole nation storyline years ago but I mean, I'm just just not surprised. I mean, WWE, they've done a lot of tasteless things. You know, let's keep on exploiting Eddie Guerrero's death and all this garbage. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, at least they're not but, exploiting the Piper's death. You know, they're at least somewhat sensible now. Yeah. Well, they're PG now. Yeah. Back then, they were like rated T for teen or MA, whatever it was back then. Mature audience. The thing is, I... With Piper, he was always a controversial guy. He spoke his mind. He didn't, like, get angry and aggressive when it came to certain things. He would do... Piper would do what was best for Piper. He was a guy that could draw money. He was the guy that, in my opinion, deserved the world championship but never got that that whole, like, title situation sorted out because, well, mm-hmm. basically Hogan. Hogan ruled the roost for so long. And when he did get the Intercontinental Championship, he passed the title back on to his, like, cousin Brett because he felt, you know, he wanted to elevate Brett rather than hold on to a championship. And that's, you you got to give more class to him. The guy had class. The guy had style. The guy had everything, like, that you'd want in uh, a pro wrestler, in a sense. You know, he could piss people off. Like, uh, for instance, I remember he was in front of a Mexican crowd. He had his bagpipes. He apologized to them and said he's going to play the the Mexican National Anthem, and basically ended up playing La Cucaracha on his bagpipes. People wanted to kill him. They wanted to yeah. kill him dead. And that shows how much heat that you have, and I think that's kind of what wrestling has lost nowadays. You know, one minute you're watching Rusev have, like, a, a fight with a guy like John Cena, and he's, like, the heel in, in, in the feud, and then the next minute... Dude's playing games with, like, JTG, or, well, not JTG, what's Xavier Woods on the WWE's gaming channel. And it's like, come on, dude. Seriously? I just watched that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, the, the thing is, I know you're, you're talking about, oh, but it's, you know, it's only story-based stuff. They're actors. They're not actors. They're wrestlers. You know, pro wrestling is an art. And they've kind of stripped it all away to try and make it some semblance of Hollywood. You know, it's become fast food in a sense. And the one thing I, I do enjoy about it, you know, what I used to enjoy when I was a kid was guys like Piper. Piper would always show, you know, what there is and, and how he would do certain things. And yeah. He hit, guy, yeah, he had a certain level of intensity that was in, yeah, it wasn't seen at the time with our wrestlers. Like, yeah. our wrestlers, you know they're putting on a show with Piper, you don't know if this guy is legitimately crazy or not. Yeah, there reminds me of the whole Vince Russo shoot interview he did in TNA. Yeah. You guys remember that? Yeah, oh, yeah, where he beat the living shit out of him. I, I pleasured myself to that, I literally. just. No, well, I didn't know about that. I'm talking about the part. No, they didn't fight. Piper came out there oh, no, and started Piper, shooting. Yeah, Piper smacked the shit out of him. He just slapped him across his face. And everyone's want, just looking want... at, like, Russo going, what the fuck do you want us to do? And Russo's just standing there taking it. You know, because Piper's beating the fuck out of him. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and... Is this in TNA? Uh, I believe it was in WCW. Oh, well I'm, well, I'm talking about in TNA in 2003, I think it was, where Piper was in there in the ring doing a shoot on Vince Russo. And Russo... Yeah, I heard about that. And didn't he blame Russo for Owen Hart's death? Yeah, and shoot. yeah, and he goes, "Tell me, are you responsible? Did you kill Owen Hart?" And the crowd was just, "Oh, yeah. oh like, this is going too far. This is this storyline is going too far." But it was really, I think. Oh, but he was, was he, the shoot. Yeah, he blamed him. He blamed him for Owen's death. And you know, yeah. everyone blames him. I still blame him for Owen's death because you made a guy do something. One wasn't tested. One wasn't. Two wasn't tried. And you destroyed a man's legacy. And his ability to be there for his family, his children, because you thought something was funny. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the problem with Vince Russo. It's one of the reasons why I despise him. And no matter where you sit on Twitter and go, 
uh, people just love to hate me. No, people hate you because you're a fucking shit stain eyesore. You sit there and try and <laughs> preach pro wrestling, but instead of actually understanding what the business is about, he insults people like me. I've, I had a short tenure as a pro wrestler, but I broke my ankle for the business. You know, I put my body on the line. I destroyed myself to to the point where I, you know, I, I have thought about going back at some points, but then I just sat there and go, no, you know, it's it's not worth it. Um, but it's. I, I still have that level of respect. And this is my problem, is when guys like Russo come in, they have no respect for the industry. You can tell the way he talks, how condescending he is about the business. He has no respect. He's a guy who personifies of someone getting lucky, but is a dumb, dumb fuck. I mean, literally, this guy is dumb. He's nonsensical. He doesn't know how to write properly. Even in, if you, he wanted to be a Hollywood scriptwriter so badly. If you, I basically was producing a TV show and Russo was on my writing staff, I'd probably fire him after two weeks. Because there's, the, you know, you've had situations where he's submitted scripts. It makes no sense. Like the whole TNA script thing where we ended up having, what was it, Pete Williams was the only face on the roster. <laughs> the whole entire uh, roster was heel. I don't mm-hmm. have really follow TNA in forever, so I'm uh, not sure about that. Well, so the thing know. was, a lot of people dropped out of TNA once yeah. they heard Vince Russo was coming back. Yeah. Because uh, TNA was really popular around 2005, 2006, when guys like AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels were putting on great matches, and Piper was running great promos, and then in comes Russo yeah, again. Oh, yeah. You had like, guys like Dusty Rhodes booking yeah. uh, and making sure that the matches work then you have like you know uh, Jarrett's obsession with Vince Russo you had Dixie's obsession with like trying to beat the WWE and it just it's it's killed the company for the purposes TNA is dead you know for yeah it was, it's, mm-hmm. it's gone and yeah it's sad really it's sad watching it because I've been there since the beginning you know I remember the days of AJ Styles versus Kid Cash you know I've, I've seen the days where you had two guys step in the ring you'd have a grudge match and these guys would lay it all on the line and literally kill each other in that ring. Yeah. Now, you have nothing. And it's yeah. sad. It's really, really sad. They can't even uh, afford to keep their talent on full time. If I was Dixie Carter, I would sell the company to someone who knows what they're doing or sit there and go, right, um, we need some guy. We need, like, Jim Cornette. Let's get Jim Cornette in, but we'll have Jim Cornette to basically come in and manage every aspect of the company. They need someone to do that. They, they even get a Jim Ross to do it. Problem is, they won't. They're not going to do it. They, they won't. And yeah. she's going to continue to kill the product until eventually no one's even going to care what the hell, you know, what the hell TNA has been about. Yeah, they lost her TV deal. You know, they had neck words, you know, a lot of bad blood was Spike, you know, Destination America. It just looks so bad as a company right now. Yeah. And I don't know why anybody would touch them. No, I remember Paul Heyman talking about he had a five-year plan yeah. for TNA, and they said no. I guarantee you, Paul Heyman could have turned that company around. Not, not by himself, but if they would let him be in charge, have a lot of creative freedom... He would. Uh, in addition to the great talent they had, TNA has great talent. It's just the direction of the company, because of Dixie Carter's be, uh, being boneheaded and and have Vince Russo come in and mess a few things up here and there. If they would let someone like Jim Cornette or Paul Heyman or Jim Ross have a lot of creative freedom, not Bischoff, not Russo, but just you know someone that really knows what they're doing and has good creative ideas and knows what's best for business, TNA would probably be giving WWE competition right now like WCW used to. Yeah, and I agree with you. And it's it's one of those things you look at it and think, we could do so much more with what we have, but instead of doing anything with it, they just sit there and go, you know, this is it. You know, this is what this is this is what what we want to be. We want to be those guys. <laughs> yeah. Problem is, it's pretty much yeah, take it or leave it, and a lot of people are leaving it. Yeah, Steve Jobs never came out and said, "I want to be Microsoft." Steve Jobs came out and said, "I want to make a unique product." 
you know, and that they, they learned from their mistakes and Apple created something amazing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, they always kept thinking and the problem with TNA is they don't think. Um, it's, it's kind of like the way that today's culture is, you know. Um, they don't really know what they want to do or how they want to do things. All they just think about is, I just want to do it this way or I just want to do it that way. And it's, oh, I just want to be like the WWE. And it shouldn't be, I just want to be like the WWE. You don't want to be the WWE. What you want to be is the alternative. ECW stood out because it was the alternative. WWE succeeded because they stole a lot of ECW's ideas. And yeah. that's where the problem lies. When you're trying to build something as a company or you're trying to build something as an entity, as a business, I'm not saying I'm the best business man in the world. I'm living in a tent right now, so I probably don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> the, the whole idea behind trying to make something work is you want to do something for the betterment of that company and the betterment of those working within it. You've had so many talented guys. You've got great wrestlers like... Bobby Roode, you have James Storm, guys who've left the company now. Um, to a lesser extent, someone like Magnus. I'm not a fan of, you know, Magnus himself. I think he, in terms of British wrestling, there's a, there, you have a ton of better athletes and better wrestlers than Magnus. And I'm I actually think, a fan of Rod Star Spud in a way. Yeah, me too. Uh, I Spud. Uh, me and Spud used to actually frequent the same uh, training facility. You know, I remember when he was a kid, he was jumping around the fucking ring like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a friend of mine, and he was someone who, he, he believes in TNA, because he's like, without TNA, I would never be in a position that I'm in. And I agree with Spud on that. But what mm-hmm. I disagree with is the way that the company's handling things. And Yeah, gosh. for some weeks that he wouldn't even be on TV when I could see him having some awesome promos. He was, uh, you know, at Division Champion for a bit. And yeah. then they cool off on his characters, and you, sometimes you don't even see him for months. And that's the problem. And I think with guys like Kurt Angle, I love Kurt to pieces. Yes, I know he's the best wrestler on the roster, but he should have destroyed Spud and Aries in two different matches on the same pay-per-view. You don't do that. You no, especially to- since, yeah, he's injured right now currently. Yeah. You need to have this guy rest. Yeah, and that's the problem is they've kind of thrown themselves into the same situation as WWE has currently with their main event talent. They don't have enough of a stacked talent roster uh, in order to actually produce it. And yeah. the now that they've, they've basically, like I think it's 98% of their talent pool is gone. I think the only guys they have a full-time contracts are Jeff and Kurt. You can't base the company on Jeff Hardy and Kurt Angle. It doesn't work yeah. that way. And what Piper tried to do, Piper tried to come in, make it Smash Mouth. And I, and I did like, you know, excuse me, uh, Russo as a manager worked, you know, for TNA. I have to admit, you know, with, with when he made sex, uh, that's what basically what the, the, the group was called. And it worked for what it was. It was very Smash Mouth in terms of TV. You had legitimate heat on this guy. He worked great as a heel manager. That's the extent he should have been. He should be writing any promos. He should have been booking any talent. He should just be, you know, there to get the heat and get the heat on the stars. Yeah. And the problem is, you've got a guy like AJ Styles, who's basically amazing. And Jim Ross has said it. Why are you trying to turn this guy heel? Why? It makes right. no sense. Because right. it was, and you, it was, you know, they should have what uh, they had Bischoff do in WWE. Not be in creative control, but be a heel think, uh, authority authority figure or manager. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's the problem. It's It didn't do what it was supposed to. And the sad part about it is they... Instead of learning from their mistakes, Dixie's just like, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. And she's not right. She has no idea what she's doing. The company doesn't know what it's doing. You've got Dave Lagana, who was fired from the WWE for the ECW brand because he was leaking stuff out to the internet. You know, uh, Stephanie tried to find the mole in the company. He turns out he was the mole in the company. And he made a website talking about how things need to be better booked. And then suddenly, he uses Ring of Honor to get 
like a, a standing in TNA. Does it, is, the, is the booking great in TNA? No. Uh, any talent standing out? No. I probably can name two different talents that have managed to stand out on their own, apart from, you know, everyone else. That's Kurt Angle and also what's the name from the Dolls House. That's it. And when you've got that situation going on, you really have nothing. You know, you yeah. have, and it's a shame to see his legacy bastardized. There, there was a rumor going around that apparently he was going to pass Piper's pit on to Chill Sonnen. I think that that's a load of hot water. I, you know, I, I, anyone could do an interview segment. I could do an interview segment. I could go on wrestling TV and I could do an interview segment discussing whatever uh, and drawing heat on, on the two guys that are going to wrestle that night. That's easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What you need to do is, in terms of talent, you've got to make sure that your talent stands out. And they're like, oh, but Chiel Sonnen is a great promo guy. And it's like, you could be the best promo guy in the world. It doesn't mean you're going to be better than Piper. Right. And that's mm-hmm. the problem. Though. You've got guys like The Miz. You've got loads of guys coming out there saying, oh, um, I'm going to be like better than everybody else. Or I'm going to be this guy. I'm going to be that guy. But yeah. no one, in my opinion, in terms of promos, can hold a candle to Roddy Roddy Piper. Nobody. Right. Um, but, you know, it, it's yeah. it, in my in, entire opinion, when you're looking at talent, when you're looking at Piper, you've got to look at how he stood out, how polarizing he was. He didn't have to get in the ring to know that there was heat on him. When he was managing... Um, like Paul Orndorff at one point. People hated Orndorff based on Piper's, you know, association. Right. And that's something that you can't change, that you can't take away. And I think there's only one other person who's managed to do that and stand out the way that Piper has, and that's Paul Heyman. You know, Paul Heyman is the guy that can, he can turn, he's basically the Jesus of pro wrestling at the moment in terms of promos. He can turn water into wine. Um, the other thing I, I would always say, which is kind of one of the reasons that I don't give up at the moment in terms of my situation is Piper is a journeyman. He was a guy who left home, was homeless, didn't give a fuck, uh, just went out there and said, hey, I can be a pro wrestler, I'll just do some pro wrestling. And, and got in the business and never looked back. People told him he was too small. He, he made an event in the first WrestleMania. You know, people told him he, he was never going to be anything bigger than what he is. He's basically had a career that was so polarizing he's won so many championships and he's been in some of the greatest feuds known to man no matter what it's said no matter what's done Piper is probably one of the best underused talents in the wrestling industry definitely to set out arenas including about square garden as well yeah I, yeah I heard he really helped so the WrestleMania one main event with all the heat he garnered, you know, with his real life feud with Mr. T. Here is this outsider coming into our business saying that he's going to get all the spotlight from us wrestlers. You know, real or not, you could actually relate to Piper with that. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing, you know, I'm, I'm five foot eight. I'm not the biggest guy in the room. I'm, Probably to, to me, Daniel Bryan's actually taller than I am because Daniel Bryan's, I think, like he's he's five nine, five ten. Mm-hmm. I'm five eight. Um, I'm not the biggest guy out there, you know. Uh, even if I'm, I pr- can probably get up to like uh, fifteen and a half stone, sixteen stone. If I went at my peak physical condition, that means like gym training, uh, constant protein shakes, uh, and like you know, constant meals. Uh, and I've always saw myself as, as kind of similar to Piper, like the small guy, the little guy, that's never, that that's basically would never get handed an opportunity. I have to work for what I had. That's what Piper did. Um, but, you know, it's a shame. It really is. Now, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you. I've got a, uh, um, I need like a minimum amount of battery left on my phone, so I'm going to, let you go. Much love. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, love the channel, of course. And yeah, thank you very much. It was cool talking with you. Oh, you too. And hopefully uh, once I get back to my laptop at some point, I'll make you guys a nice little intro for your channel. Have a lovely one. 
See you soon. Uh, thanks. Okay. Thanks very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Later. All right. So, yeah. And I was going to also say about the whole Piper shoot interview thing with Russo. Um, I saw that on YouTube a few years ago. And when I saw it, I was like, man, you know, because some promos are so good, you wonder if they're real or not, like you know, they're shoot, they're work or shoot. And so I did research on that, and from what I gathered, yeah, it was a shoot. I think Piper had mentioned it on his Rod Pod podcast. Is that right? I could definitely see it being a shoot because maybe they gave them some bullet points backstage, and Piper just, you know, said whatever was on his mind. He has a microphone that's always very dangerous to wrestling promoters, but you know when Russell, yeah, when Piper's going to do a promo, he's going to speak from his heart, and yeah, <laughs> he knew that Russo was going to be in trouble. Yeah, and I remember also the storyline with uh, it was before that in WCW. Remember Creative Control and Vince Russo? I think so. It was when Russo would be behind the camera, he would never show his face. Yeah. And he had Piper, you know, be a special referee or whatever. And it was the night after Starcade 99 with the whole Bret Hart, with the Bret Hart and Goldberg match. Mm -hmm. And Piper was the referee, and he ended up screwing over Goldberg. Uh, Goldberg. Yeah. yeah. And the next night, Piper felt real bad about it, and then he went to the creative control office and just start, started destroying everything. And there was this one part where he was trying to hit this mon uh, this monitor with a baseball bat, and he couldn't break it, and he just waved his hand and threw the bat down and walked away. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> it was like he's supposed to break, but he's like, ah, forget it, and he walked off. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of things Piper did was funny. I just got through watching Royal Rumble 92. Piper was in that match, and he also beat the Mountie for the Intercontinental Championship. And 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 also, so real soon I'm going to watch WrestleMania 8. And one of the reasons why is because Piper versus Bret Hart. Yeah, great and, match. Probably one yeah, of the best matches in his career. Yeah, and the promo before that, where, you know, how I mentioned in the video we did last week on my channel, you know, he's kind of like uh, making fun of Bret Hart a little bit and talk about, you know, of course he wasn't pod trained. He was seven, but ah, <laughs> we all got our problems. I used to go over his house when we were kids, and Mrs. Hart would make those bologna sandwiches. And of course, you only put one piece of bologna in there, but ah, it doesn't matter. I was hungry. <laughs> and then ah, we used to tie our shoes and little bows, and then, of course his was tied together, but ah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the one before that, WrestleMania 6, his match with Bad News Brown. Oh, yeah, Bad News Allen. Yeah, and I keep, every time I think of Bad News Barrett, I keep saying Bad News Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and the interview where he was, he painted himself half black. Which yeah, I pretty con don't, controversial. But that was Roddy. I don't understand why he did that, though. Like, some people say, that's racist, but was he really painting himself black? Just to, you know, I don't think he's made fun of his race, but at the same time, was he? I mean, I don't know. It, it I was, think he yeah. was, <laughs> in all honesty, because Piper was known to, you know, go over the edge a little bit whenever he faced, like, a Mexican wrestler like Corey Guerrero. He would, yeah, yeah sometimes he would cross the line with the Mexican fans. Yeah. And so he would, he would like, be like... Tonight, you're going to see the hot rod or the hot Scott and start snapping his fingers and dancing disco style or whatever he was doing. <laughs> and he goes, Bad News Brown, let's talk about those big bug eyes of yours. <laughs> We're going to pop right out of them sockets. <laughs> or how about that foot long nose hair that you can pull cars with? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny stuff. And I remember Bad News Brown saying in the promo, what you need to do is uh, he said something about his kill to call it the skirt, and Piper came after him. They started fighting. And yeah, because Bad News Brown was still the heel, and he he was a pretty tough guy. So <laughs> the way Piper would get you know sort of like a baby face turn is that he would sort of beat him halfway. Like he wouldn't get trampled on. He would make sure that he looked strong 
to <laughs> you know bad news brown who's like you know who's always egging on people and yeah. piper would just egg him on right back and really sell the match yeah <laughs> it's so, yeah sometimes he crossed the line with that whole paint himself black thing but <laughs> I, I heard that oh, go ahead oh no i was just saying yeah maybe he crossed the line a little bit with it but maybe yeah, the way he did like hat paint is <laughs> maybe like he was trying to make a Star Trek statement or something like that, so he didn't like go all the way. Yeah, and I heard a uh, uh, PW Insider mentioned years ago on one of the audio shows that Arn- Arnold Scolan and Andre the Giant had him. Uh, I think they gave him the paint that Piper used on his body that night. Mm-hmm. But it was the kind that was very hard to get off. Yeah. So it was a rib, and he Popper had to go through the airports and out in public looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can see them doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was hilarious, and um, of course the Piper's Pit segments. I mean, I remember the I saw the one on the network. I saw the one with uh, Bruno San Martino, and then of course the most famous one I I think would be the Jimmy Snuka one. Mm-hmm. And I remember he had a Piper's Pit, I think, with Randy Orton or Bob Orton back in 2005, where Randy Orton got Piper's face saying, you're the reason why my dad was miserable every day on the road or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, or uh, I'm trying to think, oh, yeah, the Stone Cold, when Stone Cold was a guest on Piper's Pit at WrestleMania <laughs> 21. Yeah. Welcome to Piper's Pit. Just slap, sl- not slap him right across his face. Yeah, and Austin said, thank you very much. You sorry, son of a bitch, <laughs> slaps him back. Yeah. And Piper goes, I kind of like you. <laughs> <laughs> Did CM Punk ever appear on a Piper's Pit? I don't believe so. I was wanting to see that. That would be a dream Piper's Pit right there. <laughs> Those two, I know CM Punk hates the term pipe bomb, but, I mean, I, that you talk about pipe bomb. It would be two pipe bombs right there, Punk and Piper. That would have been pretty cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm surprised Punk didn't have his own segment. Um, what, what would you call it? Uh, straight Edge, the Straight Edge Show, back when he was the leader of the well, back, uh, the Straight Edge Society, or what you call it? Um, the Cult of I don't know. Forget it. I can't think of <laughs> the Cult of Personality. No, no. The, well, I'm trying to think <laughs> of the segment. We call it the Cult of Pipe Bombs. Now fail. I don't know. <laughs> the Cult of Controversy. I don't know. But yeah, and speaking of controversy, the Born to Controversy DVD of Roddy Piper that came out in 2005, 2006, I remember one of the things he said on there was, and he was around 50 at the time, he said, let's face it, man, I'm not going to live to be 60. I'm not going to make it to 60. <laughs> well, he did. He yeah. made it to 61. That's still too young to die, but he, at least he made it past the age where he think he's going to make it. And... Was it around that time where he had cancer and he beat it? Yeah, he had all sorts of health issues, sadly. Like a broken hip, bad back, tons of surgeries. You know, yeah. just all sorts of things wrong with him. You name it, he probably had it. But, yeah, it's just amazing that he was able to make it up to 61. Yeah. That's why he didn't think he was going to make it at 60, just all the health issues he had and the life he lived. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I remember the, the hip. The, he, had a, he had that scar on that hip. And he got exposed in WCW when uh, Hollywood Hogan exposed it, saying, how's the hip, Piper? And Hogan tried to use that against Piper in their matches. And I just remember Halloween Havoc 96, where it was after the Macho Man and Hogan championship match. You hear Piper's music hit. Now, this is about five or six months after his match with Goldust at WrestleMania 12. Piper, you hear bagpipe music, and I'm thinking, no, nah, no, nah, wait a minute. No, nah, I can't be Piper. This is WCW. He comes out. Everybody goes crazy. What? Piper? WCW? Dang, hold up. And then he goes to the ring, confronts Hogan and the Giants there. He, he goes, hold on, Sprout. You stand there, Jolly Garen Giant, or whatever he said. And did that promo about the, the history with each other 
and how Hogan was like, oh, you know, I was just joking, brother. Me and you are neck and neck. I'm not the greatest icon. And Piper shakes his hand, and he goes, then straighten up. And then Piper's about to leave, and Hogan goes, oh, by the way, Piper, when you go to the restroom, you're supposed to squat in that one. And then Piper comes back in the ring, let me tell you something. Hogan goes, no, no, I had enough. Let me tell you something, brother. And then the they go off the air, and then that was the build-up, the beginning of the build-up to Piper and Hogan, icon for icon of the century at Star K96. And Piper did his promo there where he talks about how what's P.O. and him, what's pissing him off is how they act like Hogan and Piper is the only two icons in this industry. There's Dusty Rhodes, Ed Strangler Lewis, and several other people. And then Piper continues on his crazy tirade that he usually does in his promos. And he talks about, you know, I ran away from home when I was 13. You think I'm going to give up? Nah, not a chance. <laughs> and Minji Nokeland goes, wait a minute, I want to ask you this in closing. What about the hip? And then Piper does this thing where he hops off on one foot, meaning... Hey, if I lose my hip, I still got another good leg. I'm going to fight, scratch, and claw until you kill me. And so that was good stuff. And then the match happened, and then Piper won. It was a non-title match, but it was still an epic moment. Probably my favorite, one of my, definitely one of my favorite WCW pay-per-views was Starcade 96 because of Piper beating Hogan. That was good. That was awesome, yeah. I heard Piper was so good at booking himself that... He had, like, a special contract where he can sort of write the script and make sure that he can never lose. Yeah. So, rarely do you actually see him lose a match. Yeah. And he did lose to Hogan in the return match at Super Brawl two months later, Mm -hmm. where Piper was training in Alcatraz. (laughs) Yeah, you could tell Hogan was having a much better contract and... WCW than he did in, like, the WWE or WWF yeah. back then. Yeah. And so, and then Piper stayed with WCW pretty much until, I think, 99, early 2000. Uh, then he was gone. And, yeah, then, of course, you saw uh, Piper get inducted to the 2005 Hall of Fame, the same class with Hogan. Mm-hmm. I think also me and Gene Oakland, Paul Orndorff. Um... And so, yeah, uh, Piper, definitely deserving of the Hall of Fame. Definitely one of the greatest of all time. One of the funniest. And he didn't have to be a great wrestler or win championships. He was already over. Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, it's a travesty he didn't win the world title. But see, at the same time, he didn't have to. Yeah, he he was so... He had such an impact of getting the audience excited about his matches. He could garner heat or attention or a baby face or heel that nobody else could. Not even Hogan was on his level. And he didn't need to win the world championship, yeah. He was famous in his own unique way. Yeah, and I think he's what really helped catapult Hulkamania. Yeah, he was the perfect heel at the time to get Hulk Hogan over. Yeah. And it was that that Halloween Havoc 96 promo where he said, Hogan... If they didn't hate me so much, do you think they would have been cheering you so much? <laughs> and Hogan's about to answer, and then Papa goes, Shut up, I ain't finished. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hogan goes, You know what? Now that I think back, me and you were neck and neck. And Papa goes, Why don't you shut up for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, Piper, real sad when I heard he passed away. I first heard about it. I think Michael Burnham might have posted on Facebook saying, I just heard a rumor. Uh, TNZ has reported that Piper's passed away, and I was like, oh, man, don't tell me, uh, tell me that's not true. So I went to PW Insider. They didn't report it yet. WWE.com didn't report it yet, so I was hoping, hopefully, this is just false information. Uh, it's just a rumor. Mm-hmm. Sadly, PW Insider, well, PW Insider did report it. They were, they were reporting what TMZ reported, and usually they don't put anything up until they get confirmation they pretty know, pretty much know for sure. It's true what's going on. And then I got the announcement on my WWE app saying that Rod Piper's passed away. And it was confirmed, and I was at work during that time. And when it was slow and I would go somewhere where 
it wasn't busy or go to the restroom, whatever, check my phone, then that's when I was reading more about it and I found out what happened. And No, it was tough. And, and it was cool that Rowdy Ronda Rousey dedicated her championship victory to Roddy Piper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, because it was a perfect name for her. And, you know, she asked politely, hey, can I borrow this name off you? And Roddy said, Roddy Piper said, sure, go ahead, you know. I think it's cool yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, he passed it. Yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was rowdy, but for rowdy was cool. <laughs> Just when you think you have all the answers, I changed the questions. <laughs> so, yeah, probably tonight I'm going to look up WrestleMania 8 on the network or the Piper Born of Controversy documentary. And, yeah, so good times to Roddy Piper. And I never knew the guy before what I heard. He was a, seemed like a genuine human being. And I also heard that back in the day, he when he would win over a jobber, he would go to the back and give him some money. Hey, man, thanks for putting me over tonight, man. Here you go. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. He was one of those guys that really helped the new guys in the business. Like, <laughs> you know, you have these big seven or six-foot tall muscle-bound guys that – like to stiff the young guys in the ring. Piper, you know, he was at least professional about the wrestling business. Like, he knew him when to put himself over. He knew when to not to job, but he also helped the young guys out a lot. Yeah. And I think that's where a lot of his Canadian roots go back to, you know. He worked a lot of the territory, territories, you know, uh, he knew how to wrestle. Like, <laughs> I'll, he wasn't the most technical wrestler out there, but he knew his stuff. Like, he knew the basics on how to get a match over, you know, without looking like sloppy or anything like that. But he was a brawler. He made it yeah. look like he was more crazy than he he actually was. Yeah. And I can't forget to mention his movie, They Live. Oh, yeah, definitely. Probably the best movie to feature a pro wrestler. Yeah. And that's saying something because The Rock has been in some pretty big movies out there. Yeah. And one of my favorite parts is, I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And oh, well, a bubblegum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the fight scene with him and that guy that was epic <laughs> yeah it just went on forever <laughs> put these on now i saw i never seen the unrated version i've always seen i've only seen the made for tv version <laughs> so uh, some of the quotes i'm seeing here might be, might have been a censored version but i remember one part before they fought he goes either put on these sunglasses or start eating that trash can and the guy goes not this year and that's when they start fighting. So that was, uh, and the part where he, Piper, was trying to hit the guy with the beer bottle, he misses and hits his car instead. Oh, no, 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 he's trying to hit, I think, he's trying to hit the guy with the 2 by 4 He ends up busting the car, the guy's uh, window out of his car. <laughs> the guy gets mad, ends up, he breaks the beer bottle like he's about to stab Piper with it. And Piper starts laughing. <laughs> ha! You're not going to really stab me with that, are you? And then he came after him and they start fighting again. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty funny and I I think I asked uh, my friend Seth on Facebook uh, or he's also you know, a good friend of mine in real life I used to work with him uh, he's met a lot of wrestlers he's met CM Punk and he's met Rod Roddy Piper he posted his picture on Facebook that he showed me years ago of him and Piper he met Piper in person shook his hand talked with him and he um he said, I was talking to him on Facebook, I, told, I asked him, I said, Seth, did, he, did Piper even have a name in that movie? And he goes, I don't know. And it turns out, I did some research, I, don't think, I think Piper was nameless in that movie. The character had no name. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. They asked him mystique to the character. The character, Piper's character in that movie was, a, I think, a, like a, a drifter, a homeless drifter, and looking for a job. And in the credits, it says, Nada. <laughs> at the name. I was like, wait, is that his name or does that mean he don't have a name? So I think it meant he, don't, he didn't have a name. 
And so, man, I love that movie. I'm trying to track it down and watch it. I tried to watch it on YouTube, but there's a Spanish version of it. <laughs> I said, no. Uh, I was hoping they put it on Crackle this this month. Maybe they'll put it on Blu-ray or something with, you know, a nice special edition to tribute to Roddy Piper. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. There will probably so, be more tributes and more movies coming out about his career in the coming months. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I remember him being in the video game WCW NWO Revenge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so I never, I don't think I've had an action figure of Piper. I got some action figures now. I don't think I have one of Piper. Um, uh, but, yeah, man, I mean, the Piper... But definitely an icon, no doubt. And I mean, yeah. I don't know what else to say about Piper. I mean, I think I, I think I said everything I'm going to say. And I definitely, um, I think the funeral is going to take place on the 11th. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. I think I read on uh, somewhere online that the funeral is going to take place on the 11th. And I think it happened out like 30 minutes before that. Fans are invited to show up and you know give a moment of silence, and then. After that is when the funeral is going to start for only the the friends and family of Piper. So, yeah, um, rest in peace, Roddy Piper. You're definitely one of the greatest of all time, one of my favorites. And it's always tough as we get older, our favorites start passing away. And so, yeah, uh, this is uh, was also a tough one. And, yeah, so that's all I got to say. Uh, you have anything else you want to say about Piper? Well, any young wrestlers out there? If you want to emulate a wrestler, definitely check out Roddy Roddy Piper's career. It was amazing. <laughs> he cut great promos. Yeah, this is the guy you definitely want to be. And think of all of the big programs he had throughout the years. Starcade, WrestleManias, you know, SummerSlams, you name it. He was there. Definitely a big chunk of wrestling history is gone with his passing, but we can still celebrate his lifetime of work. It's yeah. historic, and he will truly be missed. Yeah, definitely. And if you haven't seen it yet, go watch They Live. Check out They Live. The first, I forgot to mention this, the first 30 minutes of the movie, I thought, man, I thought, this movie's boring, so I changed the channel. Then I gave it another chance one day, and I watched the whole thing. I said, oh, wow, this is freaking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Back then, I didn't have patience for movies. If you didn't entertain me at first, I was like, oh, that sucks. Now then I learned where you got to give it time. <laughs> give it yeah. time for the build-up. Believe and, me, you yeah. could do a lot worse just watch yeah. any Hogan movie. <laughs> yeah. Even though I did, yeah. I mean, to a certain degree, I liked Mr. Nanny and Suburban Commando, but they don't hold a candle to they live no they do not hold a candle they live and this is coming from a Ho i've been a lifelong hogan fanboy pretty much back in the day i was a hogan fanboy it's ridiculous and I, so i've always liked hogan over piper but i'm telling you piper's movie they live 10 times better than not just any hogan movie but probably any rock movie or uh, whatever other wrestlers have been in movies, I, I can't think of really any more wrestling slash actors other than Piper, Hogan, and The Rock. Yeah, it just goes to show you how insightful Piper was because uh, he wanted to do his own movie with John Carpenter. Vincent Mann didn't want to do that. He wanted to put Piper in his like own films like No Holds Barred and something like, cheesy like that. Piper said, no, I want to have my own opportunity to be in the big Hollywood picture. And, you know, he left the business to go to Hollywood, and it worked out for him. So, you yeah. know, kudos to him. Where Hulk Hogan said, all right, Vince, I trust you. Let's make Mr. Nanny. <laughs> yeah, and not quite as successful. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, there was a movie called Body Slam and Roddy Piper, was it? There's several movies with Roddy Roddy Piper, like I'll have I mean, to like look wrestling, up like his filmography. But yeah, yeah, there is. But there's uh, I think there's one called Marked Man that he he did while he was with WCW. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But then there's a re there was a wrestling related movie. Flair made a guest appearance. I think Captain Lil Bano was in that movie, and Piper's partner was one of the Samoan SWAT team, if I'm not or Samoan wrestler, if I'm not mistaken. I got to do more research. I have vague memories of that movie. 
I think it's called Body Slam, and I think Piper was in it. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. I'll do more research on that. But, yeah, I, I remember that as well. So, And I think that movie is still better than, uh, well, I don't know if it's better than Noah's Bar. Cause Noah's Bar was, um, I thought was pretty good based off the feud he had with Zeus. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, anyway, uh, they live. Um, check it out. It, it's ECW. Definitely. All right, so that is it. We are out of here. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks again, once again, to Michael Burnham for joining us. Check out his channel, Twitter, and Facebook in the description box below. And don't check out Star Soldier's links. No one cares about him. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right, but guys. Do go to Arizona World Champ. Yeah, yeah, and watch some more two-hour championship runs of Pit Fighter. Jeez. <laughs> all right. Anyway, that is it. We are out of here. I'm Ron Moore. And the one, the only. Here's our cool chat. All right. God bless and take care. See you all later. Rest in peace, Roddy Piper. Oh, yeah.